into with this webinar of the Jerusalem Press Club with Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Kornikus, head of the international media branch of the IDF spokesman unit. We want to thank uh, Atar Nussbaum and the team of IDF spokesmen and my colleagues at the Jerusalem Press Club for facilitating this webinar. Uh, Colonel uh, Kornikus will start with a short introduction and then we'll open up for Q&A. You are on mute, so please type your question on chat and he will answer them. Uh, Colonel uh, Kornikus has served as combat officer, as platoon and company commanding officer, and held liaison position vis-a-vis -vis UN forces in the region. And until 2017, he was attached as assessment officer to the UN peacekeeping operation, the first Israeli officer in this position holds a BA in military studies from the Hebrew University, cum laude, and is working on his MA in translation from Barilan University. Uh, Colonel Konikus, please. Thank you. I hope uh, I'm audible enough. I will speak uh, slowly and uh, hopefully clear enough. Most of the people on the line, I think uh, we're familiar, we've met or we've spoken, but uh, Thank you for the introduction, uh, nevertheless. Uh, I'll uh, keep my initial remarks short. The um, situation today is that our priorities remain the same. Priority number one is to ensure that the IDF has operational continuity, that we are capable, ready, equipped, manned, and uh, supplied in order to continue to defend all of our borders. Uh, north, south, central Israel, above ground, below ground, at sea, and in the air. All of these uh, missions are priority number one. And the first steps that were taken by the IDF was to ensure that the IDF is, you could call it, encapsulated and safeguarded in that sense, and that we minimize the risk for contamination and spread of the virus within the IDF. For that purpose, we took a, a, a number of steps. The first and perhaps the most drastic one was that all of the soldiers and officers of combat units were sent to their units three and some weeks ago, and they have been in their units since, and uh, we, they, they are planned to stay in the units for quite some time until the situation stabilizes and until we understand exactly uh, uh, what the chances of, uh, of contamination are uh, coming back into uh, uh, to civilian or, or being engaged with civilians. Uh, that, of course, has uh, repercussions uh, for the soldiers and for the officers and the units, but it, it is a necessary situation. Uh, we've done a few other adjustments to the military routine in terms of the training regimen and in terms of uh, procedures. Uh, whether it is, uh, and of course, allowing for uh, social distancing and everything else necessary. That uh, has been done and is being done. Uh, and if you have questions about it, we can uh, speak. And Dromi, since I'm on my phone, I'll, I could, I'd appreciate if you'd be able to uh, uh, read the messages because the screen isn't big enough to uh, see no the... Uh, great, thank you. Um, that's... Uh, Priority number one. Now I'll say one more thing before I go on to speaking about the efforts that the IDF is doing in support of national efforts to combat the virus. I'll say one more thing about the combat situation. We have seen a certain decline, a certain fall in the amount and the intensity of enemy activity around us. Uh, that has been uh, noticed. We've seen that many of the different enemies we have that are related to Iran have, we've seen a, a certain drop in their activity. Uh, none of them have joined the uh, World uh, Zionistic Organization and we don't anticipate any substantial uh, change uh, uh, in that aspect. But in terms of scope and amount of activity, there has been a decline. This, this does not, however, uh, of course, give any room for uh, complacency. Uh, just a week and a half ago, we intercepted a Hezbollah uh, model airplane or a small drone that was sent across the Lebanese border. We have almost every night attempts to cross the fence along the Gaza Strip. 
and there's of course continued combat activity in uh, many, many other areas. So our guard is high and we continue to focus on that uh, core mission. Having covered that aspect of our job, which is the number one priority, I'll now go into more detail about what we're doing in support of national efforts to <coughs> uh, combat the spread of the, uh, the, of the virus and mitigate the effects of, uh, of the spread of the disease. From the top, it should be said that we are still in a, an auxiliary position. We're supporting efforts led by the Ministry of Health. All of our activity is uh, coordinated through the Ministry of uh, Defense and the part of the IDF that is leading activity is the Home Front Command, which is natural because that is the part of the IDF which is tasked with uh, supporting Israeli civilians in times of emergency, whether it is wartime, uh, other natural disasters like uh, earthquakes, and uh, a situation like now with a, uh, with a pandemic. The uh, Home Front Command has uh, received a, a number of tasks and other units of the IDF have received other tasks and I will go through in a, a few different families or groups of, uh, of tasks. In order to alleviate the pressure from Israeli hospitals and medical facilities, one of the first steps that were taken were to open hotels or actually to convert existing hotels to rehabilitation and treatment centers there are already six of those hotels up and running, one in Tel Aviv, three in Jerusalem, and uh, two up north in northern Israel by Tiberias. And uh, they are up and running, and there's uh, a little bit, little bit more than a thousand Israeli civilians who have been admitted or self-admitted to those facilities, and that's a, a good effort to alleviate pressure off the Israeli hospital. We also have uh, uh, call centers, that are manned by the uh, Home Front Command. Yesterday we released information about it and there have been more than 70,000 calls received at the, uh, the different call centers manned by the Home Front Command together with Magen David Adom and with other government uh, ministries. And the effort here is to inform the public in various languages, Hebrew, Arabic, Amharic, and Russian uh, about the uh, proper way to, uh, to deal with themselves, so, social distancing, preventive measures, the regulations, etc. And that so far has been, <coughs> has been positive, and that's under the category of informing the public. So limiting the effect on Israeli hospitals, one, two, informing the public. <coughs> Another effort that the IDF is part of is supporting weaker or uh, parts of Israeli society that do not have the ability to care for themselves, the elderly, disabled, and few other parts of Israeli society. We have about a thousand crews uh, all over Israel, in Jerusalem, and in many other places around Israel that are just going door to door and providing food, medicine, and any type of uh, assistance that is needed. That has been going on now for about a week, and uh, we anticipate that this mission will continue. That is uh, not led by the Home Front Command, but it's rather an uh, across-the-board effort by the IDF, mostly soldiers and officers from staff units that are going door-to-door -door and providing assistance to Israeli civilians, elderly, and those in need. Now, another type of mission that we are doing is supporting the Israeli police in uh, enforcing curfews and lockdowns and limitations on uh, movement in various parts in Israel. Now, it's important here to emphasize that we are in a support capacity to the Israeli police. This is a police mission where IDF personnel are supporting the Israeli police in terms of manpower. We're talking about six, seven hundred, but in the coming hours, uh, in the coming hours, we will add a few more hundred uh, soldiers to that quota. They are scattered all over uh, Israel uh, together with the Israeli police and patrolling the streets, informing the public, and making sure that the uh, Ministry of Health uh, regulations are kept and that uh, people are um, acting according to uh, how they should act. And uh, that's going on. That's a bit of a different mission than the other missions that we're executing. 
uh, which, uh, again, we're doing under and with the Israeli police. Uh, last thing that I'll say is about Bnei Brak. What uh, Bnei Brak and a few other communities, uh, as you saw over the weekend and uh, perhaps more so um, yesterday and today, a quite significant IDF uh, activity in Bnei Brak in support of the local authority of Bnei Brak. And that's an important emphasis here again. The IDF has not taken control over Bnei Brak and the IDF is not in charge of Bnei Brak. The IDF is supporting the local authorities in Bnei Brak and what the task that we are performing is similar to the ones that I said across Israel. We are providing food, medicine, and evacuating uh, Israeli civilians who need to uh, get evacuated or need medical assistance uh, to those different uh, evacuation facilities. Um, that's what's uh, going on in Nebrak. We anticipate that that will grow in terms of, uh, in terms of activity. Uh, and um, uh, so far, that mission is uh, going well. The uh, relationship and the feedback from the local population is good. And uh, we did really the best possible we could we could do with the time at hand to prepare our troops both mentally and physically for that mission. We are aware of the sensitivity, the specific nature of the population, and there's a few cultural uh, boundaries to be very aware of. So far, by and large, that is going well. Sorry for the delay. Sorry, we'll continue. Uh, that, op that operation uh, in the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, the last thing I'd say is that, um, and I'm sure that you've read about this as well, there's ongoing efforts by different technological units in the IDF, in the Intelligence Directorate, and also in the Air Force that are busy. Uh, developing different tools and uh, um, in order to sorry for the delay here, in order to provide uh, medical assistance, we're talking about ventilators and uh, a, a few other uh, technological devices that are being developed ad hoc by uh, different Israeli uh, or different. Uh, I'll say a last uh, a summary, an interim summary before we do questions. It is uh, indeed uh, uncharted territory for uh, the IDF as it is for Israeli society and many parts of the world. We are uh, operating or proceeding according to a clearly defined uh, priorities and strategy. Again, making sure that we retain and maintain our ability to continue to conduct our missions because we are the only organization in Israel tasked with defending the state of Israel. So that is number one. And number two is that we continue, we continue to support and we are ready to enhance our support of uh, the national efforts to uh, combat the uh, spread of the, uh, of the virus in Israeli society as per the guidance of the Israeli government and the Ministry of Defense. With that, I think uh, I'll, we'll go over to, uh, to questions. Okay, so you mentioned the, the, one of the first priorities is to maintain uh, uh, the IDF safe uh health wise uh, but we saw a couple of days ago uh some pictures from irabadim the the compound of uh training bases in the south where uh it didn't seem that the soldiers are keeping uh, the health regulation so much it looked like a, more like a a uh, a, a purim uh, uh celebration where they're sitting next to each other uh, has this changed, or was this an exception, or what? It is. Uh, the, I am aware of uh, the pictures that you're referring to, those pictures and others. And I can say that, yes, we are aware of uh, these events. I would call them uh, isolated events in uh, Irabadim and a few other locations that we have had uh, situations where we've seen uh, commanders not implement strictly enough the uh, social distancing and other safety measures that have been ordered by the chief of staff. And uh, last week, the chief of staff even uh, summoned a colonel in the IDF 
the head of the uh, Meitav, Bakum, the recruitment center, where there were deviations from uh, uh, regulations, and he was reprimanded, reprimanded that colonel, uh, for not implementing uh, restrictions and social distancing. And uh, that is the message that has gone out to, to uh, the rest of the IDF, that uh, uh, we mean business here, and we expect, the chief of staff expects, these uh, restrictions to be implemented fully. And uh, I can say that we, I anticipate, we anticipate that there will be more and stricter measures. By and large, all in, I mean, the IDF is quite a huge organization with uh, units uh, all over Israel, obviously, uh, and with varying degrees of, uh, of understanding. But bottom line is, we have seen uh, good levels of uh, discipline and implementation of, uh, of the restrictions. Those that were not on the same page have been uh, dealt with, and uh, that continues. But the chief of staff has been very clear in terms of the directive and what he expects commanders to be enforcing. In the interface with the civilian uh, population, uh, the IAF is working under the home front uh, command, but the home front command is not the overall, uh, is not uh, overall in charge of, of the whole operation. It's still under Ministry of uh, Health and to some extent Ministry of Interior. Uh, yes. There's a lot of criticism about it and there's, uh, there are many voices calling to hand over the management of the crisis to the home front uh, command. What are you, your opinion on this? So our view is that we definitely have the capabilities, the equipment, the manpower, the institutional knowledge, and uh, maybe most importantly, the will uh, and the readiness to do so. Uh, of course, we in the IDF, we leave a decision of that type to be made by the relevant uh, political and national leadership. And uh, I can say, I can echo the words of the chief of staff that we are ready, willing, and prepared to do more in support of the national effort, as will be uh, ordered by, uh, by, the, uh, by the prime minister and by the minister of defense. And uh, we, are definitely, we definitely see a, a process of us uh, assuming more tasks uh, not in the sense of uh, uh, aspiring to be in charge of anything, but more from the uh, basic urge to do more, help more, and to provide the capabilities and uh, uh, skills that we have for the benefit of Israeli civilians. What about the reservists? You know, for, for example, in the Air Force, uh, the pilots come once a week or used to come once a week uh to do their uh, flying missions uh how you reconcile the the need to keep these uh, people active and at the same time uh, uh conform with the health regulations right so combat uh, tempo continues with regard to the air force and uh, all other parts of the idf missions continue intelligence collection continues and other types of missions that the Israeli Air Force uh, conducts, they continue. So therefore we need the relevant personnel. What we've done inside uh, the IDF is to have at, at least two shifts. We've also used the word, cap the word capsules in the sense of one capsule being uh, totally uh, separated from the other. So in each IDF unit and especially in combat units, we have different shifts shift one and shift two, or capsule one and capsule two, uh, whereby these two shifts do not meet. And you asked about the Air Force, so we'll have an Air Force pilot that comes in from, for um, Miluim, for reserve service. He will be checked medically upon arrival. Uh, some of them also uh, will be checked for coronavirus since we have an in, 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 internal uh, IDF lab to, uh, 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 to, do, to examine, so they will be checked, and then they will be, part, they will be part of one capsule, and they will stay on service much longer than they would have in regular times in order to minimize the chance of uh, getting infected once they go back home and then bringing that back into the unit. So that is a typical step that we've taken in many combat units uh, in the Air Force and elsewhere.
You mentioned the sensitivity of uh, soldiers being in touch with the, the ultra-Orthodox community and there's a cultural gap there. Uh, I ju I'm just thinking about uh, uh, female soldiers going into um, uh, those uh, very conservative uh, uh, communities. Can you elaborate a bit about it? What do you hear from the soldiers? Uh, how they um, uh, deal with this kind of um, cultural gap? So far, as I said, the, um, that mission is proceeding well. We did a, let's say we can call it a crash course or a very quick course for those soldiers from the 98th Division, so basically the paratroopers and uh, other brigades uh, that are part of the, of the 98th Division. They are the ones who are deployed uh, and operating inside Nebrak and supporting the civilian population. So they were given a, a quick course to the uh, conduct, the do's and don'ts, and the um, codes, the general social codes in uh, Haredi society, which are different from uh, how, how most uh, usual regular IDF soldiers uh, act and, uh, and what they're familiar with in Israel. So we prepare them the best we could uh, before deploying them in, in this mission. So far, as I said, all of the reports coming in, not only are they not negative, but there are actually a lot of positive reports, engagement, and gestures of, uh, uh, of uh, gratefulness and uh, positive interaction between the local civilian population in Nebrak, uh, after all, Israelis, uh, and uh, the IDF soldiers who are there to, uh, to support. I see that Joe, Joe, Joe wants to ask you a question. Okay, yeah. let, let, him, let him ask. You have to unmute him. You unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, this is uh, Joe Harlap. Um, nice to meet you. Um, and uh, first of all, call a kabod to tell to what they're doing for the, the, the community. My question is, um, I assume that in, in the beginning, the Haredim viewed the army in the same light as the police. Now that they're seeing how you're helping them, are they more um, flexible in their approach to the soldiers? And which leads me on to ask is, is, if that is the case, would they be more uh, amenable to <laughs> serving in the army. Right, so I, I understand the premise of your question, but it's very, you know, it, it's, uh, it's uh, speculative in the sense of I, I don't have enough information, uh, empirical or non-empirical, to make any sort of uh, judgment on that. Uh -huh. The only thing I can rely on is the reports that we are getting from the field, from Nebrak and other areas, of the engagement between Israeli soldiers uh, and uh, the local population, which I said are good. Uh, but to uh, infer from that to uh, general trends in Haredi society and how that will uh, shape uh, uh, attitudes and behavior, uh, I, I say that that's uh, probably a bit premature. I can say that we are definitely trying uh, and doing our best. And so far that is, uh, has been successful. We're definitely trying to uh, approach this mission with utmost um, understanding and uh, tolerance. And again, it, 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 uh, it's easier in the sense because we are there only to help. We're distributing few uh -huh. food, medicine, and evacuating uh, wounded people or ill people from their homes to different facilities. So in that sense, it's not, it's not a, uh, a mission that uh, should bring about friction or misunderstanding. Uh -huh. Joe, well, please, please go back to mute because we want to continue. Uh, by the way, um, uh, Jonathan, yesterday, I believe, uh, Professor uh, Gabi Barbash, who was a former the Director General of Ministry of Health and now a health commentator through Channel 12, said that it might, something good might come 
from the fact that uh, suddenly the ultra-Orthodox will look at soldiers not as enemies or somebody, somebody who's, uh, who they should avoid, but rather as people who uh, bring them, uh, you know, food for uh, Pesach and help them uh, survive the crisis. So uh, let's, yeah, let's look at the... the yeah, I hope that's the case. And uh, many times in, uh, in the past, I think Israel has uh, shown, uh, and the IDF has shown, that Israeli society has always shown resilience, and we've shown an ability to uh, come together, in, especially in times of need. So without getting uh, lyrical or, or philosophical here, after all, I speak on behalf of the military, but uh, nevertheless, we of course are always happy to uh, see positive effects of, of what we do. It is a serious uh, situation on the ground in Nebrak. We understand that the civilian population in Nebrak needs IDF ass assistance, and we want to help contain uh, the spread of the virus and help alleviate uh, the, the, the suffering there. That's uh, what we're doing. And any added po uh, positive effect, that's, uh, that's excellent. Uh, on this happy note, uh, Colonel Konikus, uh, uh, we thank you for taking the time. Thank you, team, for facilitating it. And everybody stay tuned to our next webinar, 2 p.m. with Professor Amnon Lahad, the chairman of the National Council of, of Public Health, who will speak about the collateral damage of coronavirus, meaning that people don't go to the hospitals anymore and what ramifications will be for the future. Thank you, Colonel, Thank you. and see you all later. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.